So we're ready to talk some Olympics now on the Sports Max Zone. There is no other show in the world quite like this one. Men's football will be the first event on the calendar Wednesday, two days before the opening ceremony, with two matches kicking off simultaneously. 2008 gold medal winners, Argentina taking on Morocco, and 2020 silver medalists, Spain facing Uzbekistan. Caribbean athletes will have to wait until Saturday to make their entry to the Games, but there will be a healthy dose of them participating. Let's uh, take a quick look at the list of uh, Saturday's competitors in the rowing event. The Bermudian Dara Alizare. He'll be competing in the men's single skulls heat in the judo event. The Jamaican Ashley McKenzie will competing in the men's 60 kilogram category. Philip uh, Elagi from Aruba will compete in shooting. There are swimmers competing. Uh, Jaden Voulier from Antigua and Barbuda and Guyanese Raikon Noel. They'll be competing in the 100 backstroke and the 400 free heats. And uh, there is badminton as well with Sorin Opti representing Suriname. And uh, from table tennis in the women's singles, the outstanding Guyanese Chelsea Edgehill. Now, Chelsea is a standout name in that list. Uh, she'll be taking part in the women's preliminary round of table tennis. She sat down with Donald Oliver on Le Baton last week ahead of her second Olympic appearance. Yeah, we'll be going to that in just a moment, yeah. uh, Mariah. But uh, she was in Tokyo, uh, won her first round match, so she knows what it feels like to win an event at the Olympic Games. I'm pretty certain, based on her preparation, that she'll be looking to do even better in, in Paris. And we're wishing her, from a Caribbean perspective, all the best. Yeah, I know a lot of preparation has gone into this Olympics. And just um, months before, you know, a lot of articles coming out on different um, websites about what she has um, set her mind on doing. She already, in her first Summer Olympics, got a taste of what competition is like at this level. Um, she also was able to, you know, talk about areas that she would have made mistakes and she intends to rectify. So I'm really looking forward to see her go further this year and maybe even medal. Yeah, and she had a good chat on last week's Le Baton um, edition. And uh, here is that chat now, Donald Oliver doing that interview stay calm and to stay in the moment and to be able to just have you know fun playing and um, enjoying the the last days of preparation and just you know being in the moment of being at an Olympic Games. Yeah multiple Caribbean champion in table tennis and she has been outstanding for a long time now. There are not many Caribbean table tennis players currently who are world ranked and she is one of them. There were you know times when there were a few Caribbean players who were among the world's top ranked players, maybe not in the top 100, but certainly in the top 200 or top 250. And uh, Chelsea at the moment is carrying the Caribbean flag high as far as table tennis is concerned. Yeah, and a lot for Guyana to be very, very happy about and to celebrate. And you heard from her just now. She seems very measured for this second Summer Olympics. And again, it speaks to the experience she got from the first Olympics. She also spoke about Lance enjoying what she's going there to do. And I think that's a key um, indicator of her mindset, you know, getting ready for a big competition. And I'll say it again. I think we have to pay very, very close attention to her lands because I think in one of the disciplines, this is where we can get a medal from as Caribbean people. Yeah, and um, it's going to be tough, though, because the table tennis is very, very difficult to... To, to climb the mountain as far as Olympics are concerned. And we have athletes from China and a lot of the European nations that produce really outstanding table tennis players. But last so, year it was a South Korean that actually took her out of the, not last year, last, last Olympics. Last Olympics, yeah. Yeah, that took her out of it. Yeah, well, the Asians have been generally pretty strong in table tennis and the Swedes are, are pretty strong as well. So European and Asian table tennis players are the ones that are usually dominant at the Olympic Games in the sport. And for Caribbean players to, to shine at the Olympic Games, they have to be really, really special. But I know that Chelsea, having competed at some world tournaments before, um, competed at the Commonwealth Games as well, has the kind of background on her log to suggest that she would have grown 
over the past three years since the Tokyo Olympics. And uh, if you watched her on Le Baton, there was a sort of quiet confidence, I thought, that I she like exuded. That. And I, I like the fact that she feels um, prepared. She was already in Paris last week when the interview was done, so she is already in the Olympic atmosphere and getting herself ready for competition. That's all you ask of the athletes, you know. Be prepared mentally, physically, and just, you know, give it your all. Um, we, the entire Caribbean, will be looking on. Guyana has a lot to be um, proud of. And as I said, you know, we'll be definitely rooting for Chelsea. So, Lance, based on the list that you called out, you know, Saturday, we have a lot of events to tune into. And I know we spent some time on Chelsea, but there are so many events that, you know, our Caribbean athletes will be taking a shot at. Yeah, and um, as we said over the weekend, judo, shooting, swimming, badminton and, and rowing are events that they will start off with on, on the opening day, well, opening day of competition for yeah. the athletes because the opening ceremony is on Friday. And we know that there are football and rugby sevens matches on Wednesday as well. We explained on yesterday's show that because those tournaments are, from a, from a period standpoint, are lengthy events to get down to the gold medal. They had to start before yes. the official start date for the Olympics. So that's the reason why, although the official opening ceremony is on Friday, Friday. we're actually having rugby sevens and, and football starting off on, on Wednesday. Yeah. So um, typically in the first week of the Olympic Games, the Caribbean is most represented in swimming. And um, we don't have a, a huge history of swimming success at the Olympic Games. George Bovell had a bronze medal at the Athens Olympics back in 2004. And in recent times, we've seen Alia Atkinson and Dylan Carter being among the top swimmers. And there are some Bahamians who have always um, put their hands up with some pretty steady performances as well. But the key for Caribbean athletes when they go into the swimming pool is try to get by the first round and get past the prelims and into the the, the B final or the A final of the Olympic Games because swimming is a very, very tough sport. Yes. And typically, it's just a handful of Caribbean athletes that will put themselves in line to get to like finals or, or in medal contention. So let's see what they have in store for us this weekend. Yeah, it's funny you talk about that because I started reading the book today. I told you about Michael Phelps and, you know, just the amount of determination. In the book, he spoke about um, swimming from at such a young age, Lance. And, you know, I can't wait to continue reading because it's just the application and the amount of work that goes into these sports. So as much as we're hoping the Caribbean um, athletes medal, the swimmers, for me, just even reaching to an Olympic is an achievement. And we have to remember that because I feel sometimes we're so harsh on ourselves and on the athletes that, you know, we suck the joy out of them because then you don't medal and you feel as if you're a failure. But I just want to say that, you know, just even making it to the Olympics, calling yourself an Olympian, you know, we celebrate you for that. Yeah, and the, as I said, it's been difficult over the Olympics history to for Caribbean athletes to get to the, 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 the medal stage of, of the Olympic Games. I remember in 1984, the Jamaican Andrew Phillips had reached the final. I think it was the 200 IM. Yeah. And in 1996 at the Atlanta Olympics, Leah Martindale, the Bahamian, the Barbadian, had reached the 50-meter final as well, for freestyle. Annie Roberts coached her. Mm -hmm. And um, so there have been performances over time that give encouragement to our swimmers. And we know that Alia Atkinson had done so well. Even now, continues to hold one of the world short course records for the breaststroke, 50 meters. She's retired now, but she had a long history of being a prominent swimmer globally. And uh, her Olympic efforts fell short. But I think she can be very proud, Alia Atkinson, of, of what she offered for, as a Caribbean swimmer on the global Olympic stage because it's very, very difficult. You mentioned Michael Phelps. He, he was phenomenal. And there's been no swimmer in the history of the Olympic Games. There's been no competitor in the history of the Olympic Games that um, captured as, as many titles as he did. But um, I think he is the kind of performer that will inspire um, all Olympians, whether it's swimming or any, basketball any or track and field, his massive success and you're reading his story, mm -hmm. it, it, it is inspirational. And it is the kind of story that will give encouragement to young aspiring athletes in whatever sport they're, they're pursuing. 
Yeah, and definitely learned so many different things that I had to highlight. And I just got started on the book, um, different motivational things that, as you said, can be applied to any of the sporting disciplines. So I want to say that Olympic starts tomorrow because we have football starting tomorrow. And I can't wait because it starts with Argentina. So really looking forward to see how that goes. And there will be women, women football, men's football, shooting I saw. One of the sports also that I'm looking forward to. So I just can't wait for the curtains to go up. <laughs> and they will go up. But it's 9 o'clock Eastern Caribbean time, Wednesday morning, and 8 o'clock in Jamaica for men's football. Argentina taking on Morocco, as I said. Men's football and rugby sevens on uh, Wednesday. And uh, they will continue with more competition on Thursday before the opening ceremony uh, at lunchtime, Caribbean time yeah. on Friday. And don't forget, download the Sportsmax app because that's where you can see all the action from uh, the Paris Olympic Games and uh, on the Sportsmax channel as well. So you've got to make sure to download the app because um, it's 17 days of competition. You'll be on the move and you're not going to always be seated near a television. So you make sure you download the app so you have your devices, including your telephones, that you can your, your, your phone so you can watch the Olympic Games no matter where you are. Back with more on The Zone after this.